Hello and welcome to another exclusive Good E-Reader video. This is Nick. And this is Marcus. Today we have the Apple iPad versus the Samsung Galaxy Tablet. Today guys, we're going to talk about more about the technical differences between the two. Both of these devices are probably the hottest in-demand tablets going into the holiday season of uh, 2010. So. A lot of people always ask us, you know, what's the differences between the two? Which one should I get? So in our series of videos with the Apple iPad versus the Samsung Galaxy Tab, we're going to show you various facets. Today we're going to do the technical differences. In other videos, we're going to show software differences. We're going to show ebooks and how they are differ from device to device and so on. Today, of course, technical differences. Uh, right off the bat, they both run one gigahertz processors. The Apple iPad runs the Apple A4 and the Samsung Galaxy Tab runs the Samsung Honey Hummingbird, which is one gigahertz. As far as operating systems go, the Apple iPad runs iOS 4, which is basically a glorified iPhone operating system. In a week or two, we're going to look forward to the 4.02 update, which will add a little bit of multitasking to the operating system. And the Samsung Galaxy Tab, of course, is Google Android 2.2, which is Froyo, which is the most current version of their operating system. For screen size, you look at the Apple iPad, it's, a, it's more of a square. So you're looking at a 9.7 inch screen supporting multi-touch. Uh, the resolution is 1024 by 768. If you look at the Samsung Galaxy Tab, it's more of a rectangle in nature. You're looking at only a 7 inch screen, a TFT, that supports multi-touch and its resolution is 1024 by 600. Now, if you look at the weight, there is quite a difference. The weight of the, the Apple iPad is 25.6 ounces versus the Samsung Galaxy Tab which is significantly lighter at about 13.4 ounces. For ca memory capacity, the Apple iPad increases in price depending on what model that you're going to get. Uh, the 16 gigabit model, the 32 gigabit, and the 64 gigabit uh, models. They're not expandable, so you have to actually buy the device that will suit your needs. Whereas the Samsung Galaxy Tab, it comes with 32 gigabits internal, and you can furtherly increase the device to up to another 32 gigabits. And this is done through the micro SD card that you see right here. Now, let's talk about US carriers. If you live in the US and you want to have the Apple iPad, you're going to have to go with AT&T right now. Although Verizon will have the iPad sometime in 2011. The Samsung Galaxy Tab is a lot more global in the respects that it supports virtually every major carrier in the US from Verizon to AT&T to Sprint and so on. If you live in Canada, uh, both Bell and Rogers currently carry the Samsung Galaxy Tab. Now with the Apple iPad as far as speed, you can bo both buy the 3G and Wi-Fi version or Wi-Fi and 3G. Of course, the Apple iPad has many different cost points. Uh, if you wanted to get the 16 gigabits and Wi-Fi only, it's significantly cheaper than getting the 64 gigabits and Wi-Fi 3G model, which is around $900. They only make really one version of the Samsung Galaxy Tab. It does both Wi-Fi and 3G on all major brands, on band speeds. So it'll basically get you 3G anywhere in North America and really the world right now. Now, if you look at Bluetooth, if you wanted to say use um, any of the, you know, the voice chatting type of features, whether you're doing it with Yahoo, MSN, or if you're using other programs, Bluetooth on the iPad is 2.1, whereas Bluetooth on the Samsung Galaxy Tab is 3.0. So it's the latest speeds that they have available. Of course, the Apple iPad does not have any cameras, so you can't take any pictures. With Samsung Galaxy Tab, of course, 
you can take pictures. It has a 1.3 megapixel camera right at the front here. And it has a 3 megapixel camera on the back as well as a flash. So it definitely beats out uh, the Apple iPad in terms of being able to... To be able to have basically more options, and options are always a little bit better than having no options at all. Now, they both have GPS, so you can, you know, function this as a global positioning system, whether you're having it in your car or whether you're doing uh, any of the Google uh, Maps, seeing where you're going, maybe in a new city. Let's get to Flash because that's a huge issue right now with the Apple iPad you can't currently view any flash content at all whereas with the Samsung Galaxy Tab it does flash and it actually has updates right now uh, for flash uh, 10 point uh, 10 point one so basically neither of these in North America can work as a phone straight up Although the Samsung Galaxy Tab will work as a phone if you live in Europe or the UK although there are some independent efforts right now that are allowing the Samsung Galaxy Tab to function as a phone by a process known as rooting. Uh, there is a fix right now, but we don't really recommend that you guys walk down that road yet until significant testing is done. Because, of course, when you root a device, it voids your warranty. And because it's a new device, you really want to uh, allow some trial and error to happen. It's almost like the early, early jailbreaking features on the iPhone or the iPad where... It was really hit or miss. Sometimes you would totally fry your device. Sometimes it would just work. But after some time, a stable fix comes around and most even casual users can uh, get that happening here. Now, let's look at apps because pretty well technology-wise, both of these are relatively the same minus obviously uh, the differentiation between size and weight. You look at apps and app support when you're buying a device is the most quintessential element of um, that you have to bear in mind. Now the Apple I App Store has tons of apps. You look at about 250,000 dedicated iPad apps uh, that are on the market right now versus about 70,000 on the Android market. Now we definitely have our opinions on the Android market versus the Apple market right now. Basically, the Android market lacks a lot in terms of the integrity of apps because it's pretty easy to submit an app and uh, just you know have it right on the market. Whereas Apple has a really great quality control service. So in our opinion, if you look at just app support, at this time, the Apple iPad really wins just because they have a better quality control aspect of most of the apps work, most of them are solid, little to no crashing, of course, all apps crash, and we've experienced them themselves even on the high profile applications uh, such as the Amazon Kindle e-reader and so on. Uh, we will get onto that in future videos, but basically, you look at less applications on on the android market than uh, than the apple uh app store really has but because google android as an operating system is really growing in strides because it's basically number two or three globally in terms of operating systems for tablet devices and smartphones so as more people adapt the google operating system uh, for their devices there's more of these companies are invested financially in the success and development of the Google Android market. So despite the fact that the Google Android market is a bit inferior to the Apple, um, Apple version of the market right now, hopefully in time, like a year from now, it'll be more developed and it'll mature a little bit more.